Hello everyone! Welcome back to my For Kids video. Today we will start to learn Java Project Build Tools. And our first build tool would be the Maven because it's most commonly used in Java world. We will take a look at the Maven basic concepts, its project structure, pom.xml file, how to declare properties, what is the repository, dependencies, scopes, and in the end I'll explain what is a transitive dependency. So after watching this video, you will be able to understand everything you need to start work with the Maven. What is the Maven? Maven is a project build automation tool. Such build tools like Ant, Maven, Gradle make building process simpler. It automates everyday developer goals like code compilation, tests running, dependency input, executable file creation, and so on. There are two types of project build tools declarative and imperative. For instance, ANT was one of the first project build tool and it was imperative. It means that developer tell to an ANT how should everything be done, what you need to compile, where to copy files, project structure and so on. Maven and Gradle are declarative project build tools. They know how to do everything. Developer tell to them what should be done, what dependencies he need or what modules does he have. Declarative system dictates a project structure, knows where dependencies should be stored and all another stuff. Maven unifies the approach to project assembly. So if you understand how does one Maven project work, you will know how does any other project work. Maven approaches are defined by conventions. So, it allows developer to form good practices for working with a project. Maven written on Java and designed primarily to work with Java projects. However, there are possibilities to work with another programming languages, but we will concentrate only on Java. Basic concepts. pom.xml. It's an abbreviation from project object model. It's a file containing all configuration details about project assembly. An artifact. It's an executable jar bar er file. Dot m2 folder. It's a path to local repository on your machine. Target folder. It's a folder where is stored an executable file, compiled classes, test reports, etc. Let's take a look at the real Maven project. We can see here default Maven project structure. Path src main java where stored our project source code and src test java where stored test source code. In root directory we also have target folder with compiled classes, test reports and java archive file. Also we have pom.xml file. Let's take a look at pom.xml file. In every pom.xml are standard xml and project tags. You do not need to understand it or learn. It's constant for any pom.xml file. Also, here we see model version tag. It's necessary for Maven, but developer doesn't use it in work. First of all, a group ID, artifact ID and version tags. Group ID and artifact ID necessary to uniquely name your project among all existing projects. Good practice is to write group ID as reversed name of website, like here in example. And also would be right to keep the same structure of folders in your project. An artifact ID is the name of your executable file. Version it's a version of project. It's also be added to executable file name. Sometimes you can see the keyword snapshot. It's special qualifier which tells to the Maven that the project in active development stage, which have frequent version updates. No snapshot keyword in version means that is release version of project. By default, Maven refreshes libraries marked as snapshot once a day in local repository. Release version not updates by the Maven. These three tags, also known as project coordinates, which are necessary for every project. You can run the projects only with the defined coordinates in pom.xml. All other configuration are defined by default in super pom. 
Note that every pom.xml file inherits all the default configuration from parent superpom.xml file, which is stored in Maven resources. For instance, in superpom.xml file are defined address to Maven central remote repository, default project structure, and so on. Next important tag is packaging, which defines what type of executable file we want to get. It can be jar, var, er, or pom. Jar means Java archive, var means web archive, er enterprise archive. Today we will take a look only on a jar packaging. Note that the Maven, unlike ant, creates only one executable file by project, while with the ant, developer can create many executable files. Next, info tags. Name of a project, description of a project, and URL of a website. These tags only for information about our project. They are unnecessary. Next block is properties. You can declare your custom properties, which most commonly used to keep versions of dependencies in one place. As you see here, we have a gunit.version property with the 4.13.2 value, and we can use it in the code by declaring this syntax. So we can replace the version of the Apache commands by declaring property, let's name it commands lang 3 version and print 3.12.0 and replace the version inside the dependency by writing the syntax. Hope you understand how to use it. Next tag is repositories. By default, Maven downloads all libraries from Maven central repository, which URL is defined in superpom.xml file. If it's needed, you can declare repositories like this. Here we see the jcenter repository. And after that, Maven will look for dependencies also in this repository. Next most important block is dependencies. As you can see, when we declare a dependency, we specify group ID artifact ID and version of library. It's a coordinates of this library. Also, sometimes we need to specify scope. It means on which stage of project working this library would be allowed. Let's look at most used scope. It's a compile provided runtime and test. A compile it's a default scope means that the library allowed on all stages, code compilation, runtime and in tests. If you will not define any scope, it would be compiled. For example, if we will remove the scope from the GUnit library, now this library would be on the compile scope. Next scope is provided. It means that the library would be allowed on the code compilation stage and test stage. Note that this library would not be included in Java archive file. Supposed that this dependency provided by the environment on which the project is launched, or this library simply doesn't need it in runtime stage. For example, it can be Lumbok, which is used only on compile stage. Next, runtime scope. Library would be allowed on runtime and test stages. Note that library would not be allowed on code compilation stage. Example for this scope is a GDBC library. And the last scope is test. It means that this library would be allowed only while tests running. Also not included in jar, just because tests not included in jar at all. So we have looked at all scopes. Next, let me show you what is a transitive dependency. You may have met this concept. Transitive dependency is just a dependency which is exported by another dependency. For instance, last version of GUnit needs a Hamcrest dependency. We can see it in Maven window. Here, in dependencies block, we see that the GUnit have the transitive dependency Hamcrest. But as you can see, we didn't declare this dependency in our palm.xml file. For most of the time, you have no need to think about that, because the Maven automatically downloads transitive dependencies.
Next block is build and it's necessary to configure your plugins. For example, here we configure the Maven compiler plugin and we say that we want to compile our project in Java 8 version. We will take a closer look at this in next video. Finally, let me show you how to create a Java archive. For these purposes, we just need to open Maven window and run the package Go. It finishes very fast, just because we have no much files. Let's open the target directory. And here we see our artifact with the name of an artifact and the version of the project. Thank you for watching this video. For now we have learned all Maven basics needed for understanding how to work with it. In next video we will dive deeper into Maven. I'll tell you about the Maven lifecycle, profiles, plugins and how them works. Hit the like button and if you want to see more, make sure you down subscribe button. Have an awesome day, I'll see you once again in next one.